Good morning, metalheads of the- Oh, shit. Well, you, that that's exactly how I wanted this to go, ladies and gentlemen. That was not a mistake at all. You know, it's like when you enter a cheat code in a video game, your character falls over a bunch. It's okay, because after that, you get unlimited ammo. All according to plan. <laughs> Yes, hello. How are you, Joey? I'm good. How are you doing? Can you I'm hear me doing, okay? I'm, I'm doing fantastic. I'm uh, a beautiful day here in Toronto, Ontario. The sun is shining. It's not raining for the first time in a while. So it's nice. <laughs> nice. You surviving this uh, craziness in the world? Okay. Uh, I was about to ask you the same thing, but since you asked me first, I guess I am. <laughs> Just still getting okay. used to... Uh, not being able to do certain things. There are a, a lot of, here in Toronto, a lot of restaurants are open again, a lot of malls and theaters, but it's still a, a long a long road to uh, any kind of normalcy. Right. It's pretty much the same here, although we we don't have uh, theaters open yet, but or the mall, but, um, but some, most restaurants are open um, for outdoor dining only and uh, things like that, you know, so... It's, in fact, we went out to dinner last night just because we try to support the, you know, our favorite restaurants and, you know, while practicing all the protocols and stuff, uh, trying to have a somewhat of a normal life. But, you know, it's, we're okay too. We're, you know, I'm, we're one of the, some of the lucky ones, I guess. Uh, so we are healthy and somewhat sane and, uh, you know, just just rolling along, keeping busy. Absolute. That sounds fantastic. Um, you have two albums coming out in the fall: one with Armored Saint, one with Fate's Warning. Were you at all concerned yeah. about how to release these albums in the midst of this pandemic and the global riots and everything else? Well, I mean, in the very beginning, um, when uh, I would say. I mean, it was always a situation where it was first locked down. It was like, okay, let's wait. Let's wait and see what happens in two weeks, you know? Mm -hmm. And then two weeks turned into four weeks, four weeks turned into six weeks and then eight weeks. And then, you know, so by the time we got to like putting this actually on the schedule, it was, which was sometime around April or start of May, we did discuss like you know should we hold it should we hold the release should we wait and see how it goes but then we just kind of came to this conclusion you know us and the label i mean uh like wh what are we waiting for you know <laughs> i mean if if people are if we're still locked down in the fall people are people are already uh, you know dying for stuff to do and music is people are dying for new music so we have new music we need to get this out there like so we just put it on schedule and full steam ahead like normal mm -hmm. uh so and i think the same holds for fates i think you know it's like what's the point of waiting around um i think that jim uh Mateos was thinking the same thing like you know i just i just want to get this new record out um mm -hmm. so uh that's yeah so we just we just put them both on schedule and here we are because I mean, uh, even I can tell you, I'm I'm listening to a lot of music in general, but especially these last couple of months, I listen to far more music. I'm listening to music I never used to listen to. So for me, it just makes sense to put more music out there. Yeah, exactly. People are home, you know, and you know, people are entertaining themselves however they do it, you know, and um, hopefully, us like-minded people, music's a big part of that. So you whether you're spinning old music or whatever you're still listening to music so um a lot of people i know were, were working from home and some people still are working from home and uh you just are spending a lot more time at home and that means more time to not be on the freeway and not going between work and home and running errands or whatnot and so now people have more time just, they just have more time on their hands and so hopefully music plays into that i think for a lot of people it does mm -hmm. 
Uh, Armored Saint is doing a virtual album release show. Is Fate's Warning considering anything similar? Not that I know of. Um, we I, we live in completely different parts of the world. It would be very difficult for us to do that unless we, yeah, I don't think for this is even possible. Mm. <laughs> we have to literally do it remotely uh, and not be in the same room. No, it's, it's not feasible for Fates to do something like this right now. Still, it's exciting to see the Armored Saint one. I mean, uh, especially considering this might be the only time uh, a lot of people get to see Armored Saint this year. Yeah, that's for sure. There's no way we're going to book anything before the end of the year. In fact, I would be surprised if, we were even, if we're even able to get something in the spring. So um, at this point, it's like this is – this is all we have right now and we have a new record coming out we want to celebrate the release of it and believe me this uh situation with the vr show was alien to us and strange and at first we didn't we weren't interested in doing it but then once we realized that it's this or nothing you know uh we would rather do this than do nothing and so this is a way for us to connect with our fans and have them come and be able to have a chance to see us, see us play, even though we're going to be in an empty venue, um, but we're going to be streaming this all over the world. So people can watch this from wherever they are in their homes and whatever country you live in. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to play a full set and we're playing four brand new songs from the record. Um, it's only 10 bucks to get in. I mean, it's, uh, we think it's a cool thing, and we're hoping that our fans will come and join us um, and come check us out. And, uh, you know, if anyone's interested or listening to this, it's uh, Armored Saint, one word, Armored Saint dot Veeps. That's V E E P S dot com. And that takes you straight to our page. And um, all you got to do is sign up there and create an account, which costs nothing. And you can get in and get a ticket for 10 bucks and there's some exclusive merch and cds that are extra if you if you want to do that but we're looking forward to it you know we're gonna just go out and rock out on stage like we normally do and have some fun with it you know so it should be cool yeah sounds sounds cool to me uh in the song mm -hmm. end of the attention span you talk about uh our fascination with electronic devices and social media and the disconnect it can create is there? Do you yeah. think there's anything more poignant or ironic about that, considering where we are in 2020, where we use technology and social media for everything now? <laughs> well, I mean, it's funny because we wrote this song like two years. Well, this song was written about a year ago, to be honest. It was one of the last songs that we wrote, um, and uh, this was definitely pre-COVID. So, had no idea where we'd be in this state that we're in now. And now that everybody's locked down and, and uh, you know, staying home a lot, we're on our devices even more than we were before. <laughs> so w we were on them before this started, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and that's why we wrote the song. That's why John wrote the lyrics. And, and uh, that's the reason this all came up. But it's driving home even more because we're using our devices even more so. Um, so, yeah. You know what? <laughs> this has been going on for a long time. Us spending too much time on these devices, mm -hmm. you know. So um, it's just uh, it's just it's just something we're pointing out. We're not really necessarily preaching one way or the other, but um, but um, you know, John likes to write lyrics in a way that it leaves. Uh, it leaves interpretation up to the reader. And um, so this is another case of that. Surely we're poking fun at it. Uh, a little bit of tongue in cheek stuff going on there. Um, but, you know, we're just as guilty as everybody else. You know, we all have devices too, and we all spend way too much time on our devices. It's mm -hmm. like, it's like everyone else. Um, but, you know, yeah, we're just pointing out the irony really of how, you know, in, in a lot of ways, these devices and the internet in, in a, as a whole has the ability to connect you connect you with people across the globe or information or you know 
be it false or true information, it's nonetheless it's information, and it's very fast. You get it all. It's the speed of your thumbs. You know, as fast as you can go, you can be connected to something. And the irony of that is, it's created this real disconnect between actual humans. Though, I mean, two people could be sitting at a cafe having coffee and just be on their phones and not even look at each other for for hours. Mm-hmm. And it's just a really sad. It's a sad state, you know, that um, that we've come to this point. But you know, um, we're just bringing it to light and hopefully just remind people to, you know, be in the moment a little more, you know, a relish in the moment around you and, uh, and, and hold on to it, you know, because this is all fleeting so fast, you know, time and, and our lives are, they're short, you know, when you think about it. So you, you gotta, gotta remember that. Mm-hmm. I mean, even even I'm guilty, especially in 2020, of using my my phone and my social media maybe a bit too much. So it's important every once in a while to just put it down and try to absorb the world around you. Like I'm I'm trying now to get out more. I'm trying now to work outside more, uh, do more yeah. jogging outside, because it it's it's far too tempting to pick up the phone, especially when. Your phone is blowing up with with reports and and news and all kinds of other stuff. Oh yeah, exactly. I mean, at the beginning of this whole lockdown, I mean, we all went through this. We were like, I'm sure everyone has the same story, but you get to this point where you're just like, you'd wake up in the morning and you you just you just go to your news feed right away and like, mm-hmm. what's happening now? What's happening now? You know? Oh yeah. And you, and you it created for... this. Yeah, yeah you, you it wait, just you created this crazy, bad, or... um, this terrible anxiety, mm-hmm. and this. De- a lot of people began suffering from depression from this, and it's real. I mean, this isn't just you know, <laughs> I'm not making this up. I mean, this is actually happening. No, I, I've, uh, so. I've I've had a depressive episode back in June. Actually, it's 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 interesting you mentioned that. It's a hundred percent real. I've seen it and experienced it, and I'm sure many others have as well. We all have. I mean, we, my wife and I, same thing. We got after a few months, it, it was like, okay, we gotta, we gotta force ourselves to do do something else, you know. So we, we started walking the dog twice a day instead of once a day, you know, just as a starter, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you know, there's a lot of things you can do to just to just get away from their phone, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, you were also set to perform live with Merciful Fate this year. Is that still the plan if you're able to tour next year? Yeah, um, that's still the plan. I, they've rescheduled stuff for the same exact, not the same exact festivals, but a lot of them are, they just re, they just moved them to this following summer. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the plan is that, you know, on paper, if, if everything goes well that will that will go as planned but of course we don't know what's going to happen yet in the world so it's a question mark a little bit but the plan is to go forward with it yeah i i imagine even so it must be exciting to get to perform with one of the most like iconic bands of of all time king diamond and hank sherman and yeah i mean it it would it, it's gonna be um it's going to be a trip for me because I before a big full circle. I mean, th- when I was starting out with Armored Saint in 1982, um, I was part of the. I had a small contingency of of friends overseas that I that were pen pals. And if anyone doesn't know what a pen pal is, because nobody writes letters anymore with a <laughs> pen and paper. Um, well, I would just, we just, it was a, we had a community of heavy metal fans and, uh, we would trade tapes with each other and cassette tapes. Um, so we would write letters and you would, you would just send along a tape of like, Hey, these are some local bands in my area or things that are, that I like, you know, you, that you might like. And, and then you would just go back and forth and trade different music and write letters and, some of them um, had fanzines and they would write little little articles on Armored Saint or something. And anyway, one of my friends I had in uh, in Holland um, sent me the first uh, Merciful Fate EP. And um, 
and then I just fell in love with it. So I, I, would, I played the crap out of that first uh, EP and loved it forever. It was just really great. So now, like, I'm, it's a pretty bizarre thing. I'm actually learning these songs now and, like, potentially going to be on stage playing these songs. It's pretty, it's a pretty cool circle. <laughs> like, like, all mm-hmm. these years later, 40 years later almost, it's like, I just unbelievable. Like, never in my life would I ever imagine that I would be here doing this. So, you know, it's, I haven't actually done it yet. So I'm, I'm someone who believes something when I'm actually coming home from the event. Um, so I'll believe it when I'm actually doing it and coming home from it, but it's going to be cool if it happens. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hank Sherman said back in May that they were working on new merciful fate music. If asked, would you be a part of that? Or are you a part of that? Um, they they have asked me to play on some demos that they have started. So I've done two so far, but I haven't heard anything in a while. Um, a lot of their plans keep keep moving and changing, so I don't know what the progress is going on. And um, but they have asked me to play on the demos, and uh, if it comes to fruition, if they ever get to the studio record. Um, I think that's a bridge we'll cross when we get there, but there, there, you know, there is a possibility of that happening. Yeah. Okay, that sounds exciting. I mean, when was the yeah. last time they even put out an album? Ninety nine. Uh, I think you're right. I think it was. Is that their nine record? I um, think so. It was either ninety nine or two thousand. Yeah, it was around there. Yeah, you're right. It's it's been twenty years for sure, at least. Damn, that's weird to think about, especially since King Diamond has still been out there doing stuff. Yeah, he's been busy. Uh, how do you balance being a part of so many different high-profile metal bands? Because on top of all this, you're also in another band, Motor Sister, with, with Scott Ian and those guys. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, <clears throat> it's been okay up until now, but now it's getting a little nutty because uh, I have... The, Armored Saint and Fate's Warning releases are really, really close to each other. That's never happened before. Um, and um, then you throw the Merciful Fate thing in the mix and Motor Sister as well. I mean, you know, Scott is obviously busy doing Anthrax stuff, and I don't know where they're at now. They must be doing some writing, I imagine. I don't really know. But everybody's got, everybody's got downtime and everything right now, so I'm assuming that everybody's writing writing music to start the next cycle whenever the cycle opens up again so it's you know i just try myself to keep everybody abreast on schedules my schedule in particular and what's going on with the different projects i have hopefully i don't piss anybody off and you know uh so far it's been okay um and I just take everything as it comes. You know, I can't really stress out too much about stuff that's mm. in the future. I just really got to, you know, have some foresight. And once things start getting planned, I need to keep tell everybody, let everybody know exactly what's going on. It's been difficult a few times. Some things have overlapped and it's, I've had to make some tough decisions a couple of times. But for the most part, I've been able to do it. Mm hmm. No, because I, I mean, uh, I think about guys who, you know, in the underground metal scene who are playing in like 20 different bands, but it's like, whatever, they're, they're, they're demos, they're putting out EPs, or they're touring once a year, but you're with, you're currently playing with three super huge bands plus Motor Sister, and I mean, I'm, I'm even looking at, uh, on Wikipedia here, I had no idea you were a member of Anthrax briefly in the 2000s. Uh, yeah, it was for a year, uh and then on and off a couple of years after that. But yeah, I mean, you know, I, I look, I, I can't really complain. For, I mean, no. <laughs> wow. I'm, not, I'm not complaining. I mean, pretty, pretty, I mean, I'm honored that I get to play in such high profile bands. You know, I, I I'm a lucky, I'm very lucky, you know, that's for sure. Like I said, I just don't want to piss anybody off and I try to have respect for, everyone that i play with and uh you know yeah it's it's a tough thing to to juggle and i i guess that's a great segue into my final question for you 
Uh, Armored Saint's been around for close to 40 years now, and amazingly, you've maintained most of the original lineup. How do you feel Armored Saint has changed as a band, if at all? Well, uh, we have changed in the sense that um, I think that uh, we have become very kind of comfortable in our shoes, in our skin. And I think that wasn't always the case during our whole career. Um, there was a portion of our where we were uh, psychologically, I would say, in the mid to late 80s and even early 90s, where we were a little bit second guessing what we were doing musically and where we fit in. Like we kind of, it was a concern where we fit in, you know, because the the genres kind of split off in, in that time. And, you know, uh, we just had, we felt like we were losing some identity maybe. And we actually didn't really know this at the time. It was just something we were kind of going through, growing pains, if you will. Mm -hmm. And um, it really wasn't until, like, when we got back together um, in, uh, after, you know, John left to join Anthrax and we had all that downtime and I joined Fate's Warning. And, but by the late nineties, when we put out revelation, we had gotten back together with this kind of credo with each other where we said, you know, we're not, we're, let's get back together because John has downtime with Anthrax. I had downtime with Fate's and I had written a few songs and then we got together and hashed out a bunch of material and we had a record's worth of material. And we said, look, we, we could actually make a record. Um, Metal Blade got on board, and I said, we'll put it out. And um, we kind of had a handshake deal with all well, five guys, and we said, look, this isn't going to be like um, we're not rekindling our career. We're not picking up where we left off in 91 with Symbol of Salvation. You know? We're just going to get back together and do this because we love it and for no other reason. So no more high expectations about trying to become successful, trying to, you know, spread our uh, fan base and get higher on the charts or bigger record sales or any of that crap. We're only going to do this because we love it. And so we went forward with that mentality. And by the time we got to, um, you know, La Raza, when I was, was doing all the writing for La Raza, I realized that, you know, this whole time, even for, even from the beginning, we we kind of just did our own thing musically, and we were doing our own thing the whole time. Be it we even during Raising Fear period, where we were kind of second guessing ourselves, mm -hmm. we were still doing our own our own music, and it was it didn't really fit in anywhere. It didn't really not exactly. I mean, it kind of fit in some places. Like some of it was kind of thrashy. Some of it was kind of like american metal groove some of it was power metal if you want to call it that um some of it was like blues swagger aerosmith hard rock you know it had all these elements the whole time and so we finally got to a place where it was like you know what we don't we're just gonna do what we we're gonna we're really gonna do what we do and and just do it because we want to write great music and that's all we really care about and you know and it was just suddenly this, this like weight was lifted off. This was like 2009, 2010. And the, th the, the way I'm, I'm answering your question is that we're so much of a different band in this sense of we have this general sense of freedom now that we don't, I don't think we've really ever felt like we had. And it was something that we kind of put on ourselves, but um, we're just in this place where we, we, still, we just feel really comfortable and being able to express ourselves in the way that we want to. It's super honest. Um, we are just making this kind of music that we want to hear. And um, I think that fans can see that. I think they can hear it in, in the music that we're writing, especially in the last two records. Um, and it's something that that connection is something that we have, have always wanted to have you know mm -hmm. and so in the last 10 years i've heard people say to me like this just sounds like armored saint it doesn't sound like anybody else you know and i take that as a huge compliment you know i mean it's that's something that we that's what we always wanted to do you know i mean we 
I loved bands like UFO and Queen and Thin Lizzy and bands that had a lot of diversity. They weren't necessarily like one thing. They did many things. And for us to be able to work in this same kind of way within certain parameters, I mean, we're not Queen, you know, I mean, let's face it. <laughs> I, I wouldn't, I, I don't think we're that, we're not that, you know, qualified to be that technically proficient and pull those things off you know i know what our limitations are but having said that i know what our, i feel like i have a good sense of what our strengths are so i think the music that i'm writing these days is it has some sense of where we come from down in our history but it also has a big step forward in other places and pushing trying to push boundaries and trying to experiment and have fun with arrangements and, you know, add a little bit of our R&B influences and, and things that we, you know, world music instruments, just things that I find interesting and mm -hmm. engaging, you know. And so I think in that, in this way, where we are now is much different than where we were in 1982. <laughs> this is the most Armored Saint that Armored Saint has ever been, really. <laughs> yeah you know and that's and this is partly what the title punch in the sky is, is referring to it's it's referring to the at least this is my take on it um uh it's referring to how we really are our efforts are that we don't want to have limitations we don't want the limitation of the sky we want to get through the sky past it we want to continue to grow become better songwriters better people, better fathers, better husbands, you know, better friends. We want to become, we want to keep growing and evolving in, in, a, in this positive way. So this is, this is the effort that we're, that we're doing. And, and punching the sky is a reflection of that. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time, Joey. I, I am extremely excited for both the new records, extremely excited to hear what you do with Merciful Fate. Uh, anything else you want to say to the fine people listening at home? Well, uh, you know, I always want to thank fans for coming along for this trip, you know. Um, part of having this freedom, you know, like I was talking about a minute ago, um, freedom to do whatever we want to do, uh, it comes from, part of it comes from our label allowing us to make records on our own terms and making our own kind of music, but it also goes to the fans who have come along and supported us along the way not everybody loves every single record or every single song we write but over the across the across the board in general i think a lot of our fans have come along and accepted us and and let us uh, kind of push our boundaries and come along with us and a lot of fans get that and they and i think a lot of them love it without any of that we would be dead in the dead in the water so we we always thank our fans for for coming along for the ride and coming with us and sharing it with us. So thank you to everyone. Well, you, you are very welcome. Uh, you have yourself a great day, Joey. Thank you very much for joining me on the Metal Meltdown. You too. You have a good one. It was my pleasure to be here. Have a good one. Take care. That was Joey Vera from Armored Saint, Fate's Warning, and as it turns out, somewhat officially, Merciful Fate. Thank you for joining us here. Press subscribe if you liked what you heard here today and you want to hear more. And as always, you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.